My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Even though we are not able to hold public worships this Sunday, I thank God for providing us with other means to speak with you today and share God's word. Today is Mothering Sunday, on which we are reminded to thank God for our mothers, whether they are still among us or have gone to be with the Lord. They are the people who initially pointed us to God and invested faith in our hearts. Somebody said that the greatest theological college in the world is the arms of the mother, from which a child begins to relate to God. They provided us faith that will withstand any trial and tribulation that may come our way. They teach us to stand firm on the rock of our salvation, they teach us from our early childhood days to say sorry when we do wrong and to seek God's forgiveness. Friends, we are journeying through the season of Lent. And this year is a moment in which we are journeying through a global pandemic caused by COVID-19 or coronavirus. Every crisis we face in our lives, everything we experience through sight, hearing and touch, is like a window that the Lord opens before our eyes to also experience His amazing grace, His unfathomable love, and His peace that passes all understanding. We need to ask this question. What is the message the Lord is giving us through this crisis? These powerful messages from the Lord come to us when we are at our most weakest and vulnerable moments. If we fail to prayerfully discern this and heed to this message and repent, we are in danger of losing out on the peace and the fullness of life that is ours in Christ Jesus when He forgives us. In the book of Revelation, chapter 2, God says to the church in Thyatira concerning Jezebel, open quote, I have given her time to repent, but she is unwilling to abandon her immorality, close quote. God says to the church, open quote, I know your works. I know your love, I know your faith, I know your service, I know your patient endurance, and your latter works are greater than the first. Nevertheless, I have a complaint against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, who teaches and deceives my servants to practice sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idols. Close quote. Friends in Christ, as we all know, Jezebel was King Ahab's pagan wife who introduced pagan worship coupled with ritual prostitution into Israel. Here we see elements of pagan worship 
impinged on civic and business life. And even today, there are Christians among us who are inclined to compromise in order to get on in life. Have you ever experienced God's patience? God's patience is amazing. In one of the most extraordinary examples of it, he gave Jezebel time to repent. And this God who gave time to Jezebel to repent gives us time to repent as well. When a wicked husband Ahab humbled himself, God healed and restored him. Humbling yourself before God in repentance will turn things around in your life when nothing else will work. James chapter 4 verse 10 says, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. The Bible says, open quote, do not make light of the Lord's disciple. I beg your pardon. Do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines those he loves and punishes everyone he accepts as a son. Close quote. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 5 and 6. Friends, I want you to note two important statements in this piece of scripture. One, do not make light of the Lord's discipline. Uh, nobody is going to tell me what to do. Attitude costs Jezebel dearly. And it will cost you too, my friends. Secondly, do not lose heart when the Lord rebukes you. Don't ever see God's correction as rejection. See it as proof that you are his child and that he has great plans for you. The call from God is always that each of us realizes and knows who we are and whose we are and what he expects from each of us. Sadly, however, more often than not, we have moved away from God and like the prodigal son, have gone on our own way. The church, the so-called God's holy people, has been as much a victim of the spirit of the age as society in general. And the Christian community is as guilty of denying the grace of God as secularism and individualism that has taken over the world. Today, even among Christians, there are attitudes, mindsets, and deeds that are contrary to the values of the life-enriching gospel and the reign of God. Friends, while our baptismal vows and covenant demand that we die unto the world, the flesh and the devil, and call us to deny self and rise unto a life of righteousness and a life of other-centeredness. More and more, we have become selfish, self-centered, and obsessed with self-gratification. I believe that through crises such as this, one in human life, God shakes us out of our apathy and indifference. He shakes us to the very foundations of our lives to confront us with our mistakes and our errors and forces us to re-examine our priorities, our values and our worldviews. I call upon each one of you, my dear friends, to heed the call of our Metropolitan, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Most Reverend Justin Welby, 
to fast and pray with the Anglican Communion and the rest of the Christian world commencing today, Sunday the 22nd of March 2020. Let us humble ourselves before God, our loving Creator, Saviour and Sanctifier, and cry unto Him before His throne of grace, to have mercy on us, to forgive our wrongdoings, to hear our prayer and to heal our world, while transforming us to once more to become people of His heart and mind. As you prayerfully go through these days of anxiety, may I ask you all to be mindful of the other and work with love and solidarity wherever we can and however we can on behalf of those who are most vulnerable in our midst. Remember most importantly the lonely, the helpless, the poor, the aged, the hungry, and those who are deprived of earning their daily wage due to enforced holidays and periods of curfew. Take courage, my people. Be conscious that our risen and living Lord and Saviour walks with us and goes before us like a good shepherd. As such, my personal belief is that Whatever that touches us, touches him first. As God's word assures us, God will never allow us to endure more than what we can handle. For he knows each of us and our capacities. Cheer up. For the Lord in whom you believe is holding you in the palm of his hand. Even as he continues to reign from his throne. May God bless you all.